I'm going to cook some of these delicious looking recipes which use Coca-Cola as a key ingredient, and we'll see just how good they actually taste. These recipes all come from this Coca-Cola cookbook, which was published back in 2013. The first half of the book covers the history of Coke, how it came about, the iconic bottle, fun facts and figures, like the first TV commercial for Coke was broadcast on Thanksgiving Day in 1950, and there's a whole section of the book dedicated to ads. The recipe section doesn't actually start until halfway through, but we do get some some delicious looking recipes. Warm winter goulash, glazed pork chops, Coca-Cola ham. These Coca-Cola chicken wings look good and I'll be making them later. But first I'm going to try something a bit more simple. Luxury baked beans. So I saw this picture and thought it was going to be just a can of baked beans mixed with some coke and spices or something. But when I actually read the recipe, it's clearly a bit more involved. To start with, we need 200 millilitres of tomato puree, or passata, so I measured it out in this jug. Then add one tablespoon of Dijon mustard. Then tip over one and a half tablespoons of red wine vinegar. Next we're going to add the coke. In this recipe it stipulates we use coke zero. I opened up a can. And we need to add 200 millilitres. Then give it all a good mix. When I stirred it with this spoon it doesn't really mix in the mustard properly, so I'm using this little whisk instead, which should help to combine it all thoroughly. Haha, <laughs> and look at that all bubbling up. Pretty cool, huh? It says to use haricot beans, but I couldn't get any, so I'm going to be using these Callalini beans, which are a very close substitute, and from the same family. I tipped them into a strainer and washed them, and the recipe says we need about 730 grams. I used two cans altogether. Then tip them into a large mixing bowl, season with a bit of salt, and pepper. Then pour over our tomato and Coca-Cola sauce. Oh wow, look at that. Already it really does look like baked beans. I can't wait to try these. I'm going to cook them in this enamel oven dish, just like they did in the book. So carefully tip them all in. I leveled them out a little bit. Then they're ready to pop in the oven. It says to cook at 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 200 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. And while we're waiting for these to cook, I'm going to start on our next recipe. Let's try these Coca-Cola chicken wings. Mmm, these look good. You can see there's kind of a black sticky barbecue sauce on them, which must be made from the Coke. So the recipe says to take a large casserole dish and tip over 200 grams of muscovado sugar. I'm breaking it up and spreading it over the bottom a bit. For this recipe, it stipulates that we use Coke Zero again. And this time we need to tip an entire can into the dish, all over the sugar. It's slightly ironic using Coke Zero and mixing it with sugar. If you're enjoying this video, do hit that subscribe button so you don't miss my future content. Next, we need to take two onions, peel them and cut them up. I'm leaving them as quite large pieces. Then tip them into the dish. Then we need to take two cloves of garlic, peel them and cut them up nice and finely. And add them to the dish too. Next, we need to add two tablespoons of soya sauce and add a little bit of salt and pepper too. We're now ready to add our chicken wings. It says to add between one and one and a half kilograms. I placed them into the dish, then turned them over to cover them in the sauce, and arranged them so they're sat side by side rather than on top of each other. So there we go. It's kind of weird to think there's a whole can of Coca-Cola in here, but they're now ready to cook in the oven. It says to cook at 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 180 degrees Celsius for two hours. And while these are cooking, let's check out our baked beans. So, the recipe says after half an hour we need to take these out and give them a stir. Ha, oh, look at that! They really do just look like baked beans. And they're actually smelling really nice. Once we've given them a stir, it says we need to put them back in the oven for a further 15 minutes. And this time, just before they're ready, I put a couple of pieces of bread into the toaster, because I really like beans on toast. And after the 15 minutes was up, I took them out, and there we go, look at that! Coca-Cola baked beans. Let's see how they compare to the picture in the book. Oh, not bad. Let's see how they taste. Once my toast was ready, I spread over some butter, and I'm pouring the beans over the top. Oh, looking at this, they have actually become slightly stodgy. And I think when I took them out of the oven 15 minutes ago, the sauce was a bit more runny and juicy. So that's definitely something to keep in mind if you prefer it like that. But in terms of looks, I'd say it's 10 out of 10. What do they taste like? Huh, they're actually really nice. Definitely a bit different to baked beans. The tomato obviously comes across as the predominant flavour, but there are some really nice subtle undertones there, which must be the coke. And if you like baked beans, I'd say it's definitely worth trying this recipe. It's a shame they have to cook in the oven for so long, but I'd give it a 7 out of 10. While we're waiting on those chicken wings to cook, I'm gonna get started on the third recipe. Let's try these Diet Coke crepes. First, we need to sift 110 grams of plain flour into a bowl, add a pinch of salt, and then it says to make a well in the middle. Then crack open two eggs, and tip them inside. Use a whisk to beat them together, and start folding in some of the flour. 
And whilst you're doing that, you can start slowly adding 200 millilitres of milk. Keep whisking it until it's all nicely combined. And in this recipe, we need to use Diet Coke. And we need to add 75 millilitres into the mix. So I used a measuring jug to calculate the right amount. And then I poured in the Coke. <laughs> you can see it all bubbling a bit. Give it all a good mix, and when you're done, we need to cover it all over. I'm using this reusable beeswax wrap, and we need to leave it to sit in the refrigerator for 30 minutes. And once we've had a look at the chicken wings, we'll be coming back to this recipe to make the crepes, and the Coca-Cola syrup that goes with them. So let's check out these wings. After two hours, I took them out of the oven, and they're looking and smelling great. The only thing that I was disappointed about was that the Coca-Cola sauce that they cook in was still really thin. It's really runny, but the recipe book does say if you want to thicken it up, we can use one tablespoon of cornstarch and mix it with three or four tablespoons of water, then add it to the sauce to thicken it up. But I found even after I'd done that, it was still really runny, so I actually added a little bit more. It does make it go a little bit cloudy, unfortunately, and we kind of lose that shiny black sauce look a little. But it has thickened it up a bit. I'm using some tongs to serve them onto a plate, and then I'm dribbling over some of the sauce. And there we go, <laughs> what do you reckon? I'd say they look really good. Here's the photo in the book, but let's try one out. <laughs> well, they're definitely nice and sticky, and when I break into it, the chicken is nice and moist. It just falls off the bone. It must be because it was cooked in so much moisture. Oh, and it tastes really good. Oh, that's a really nice sauce. Sweet and sticky, with a kind of barbecue flavour to it. Again, I don't think I'd ever guess there was Coke in here, but it really is delicious and so easy to make. I'd give this a 9 out of 10. To make our Coca-Cola syrup for the crepes, we need to add 200 millilitres of Diet Coke into a pan and leave it to simmer for 8 to 10 minutes. Then it's time to start making the crepes. Cut off a little bit of butter and warm it up in your pan or skillet. Give your mixture a little stir again and ladle some into your pan. Leave it to cook for a couple of minutes until it starts turning golden, then flip it over and cook the other side. And while that's cooking, we need to add the zest of a lemon into our syrup and leave it to simmer for another couple of minutes. And when your crepe's cooked, you can slide it onto a plate. I chopped it in half, then folded them like this. And again, I'm going to try to recreate something that's similar to the book. So I spooned on a dollop of creme fraiche, then took a few summer berries. I'm using raspberries and blueberries and dot them around all over the dessert. Then finally, take your Coca-Cola syrup and spoon some over and around your dessert. And there we go. I'd definitely say the syrup doesn't look as thick and sticky as it does on the picture, but let's give it a taste. I dipped a bit into the creme fraiche. Oh yeah, that's really nice. There's like a really rich, fortified flavour from the syrup. I don't really know how to describe it. Again, I don't think I'd ever guess this was Coke. You can definitely taste a lot of citrus notes from the zest I put in, and the juicy summer berries really accompany it well. This is really nice, and I'd give it an 8 out of 10. But what do you think about these recipes? Did you enjoy them? Would you make any? And let me know if you'd like me to make some more from this book. If you'd like to watch the video where I test out cleaning hacks, like will Coca-Cola clean rusty metal, you can click on the link here. Or maybe you'd like to take a look at some of my other videos. Have fun, stay safe, and as always, thanks for watching.